compatriots, welcome to another episode of the Arena Craft Podcast, a show dedicated exclusively to Magic the Gathering Arena. I am one of your hosts, Arjuna, and the wait, other wait, host... Wait, whoa, 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 you don't sound like Arjuna. Quiet, Kerr, you interrupted me. Arjuna would never be so rude. Who are you? <laughs> Reveal yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I was just channeling some of that old country. <laughs> the uh, the other the other host, Kovac Go Blue, has made his presence known. There you are, Arjuna. There is a weirdo. Rather like he's using your I mic. Might add. Look out! <laughs> Look out! He's in your room somewhere. He stole your microphone. Don't, you know, you know, he's what's, behind you. <laughs> what's fun about being English is that you get to make fun of English people. Still, you know, in your own way. Wait, am I not supposed to? Oh, I mean, you can. You just do it badly. Badly? <laughs> That's like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that stop you, CGB. Nothing stops me. It's fine. Do you want to, now that you're here, and that freaking weird old curmudgeon English demon has been exercised, would you like to um, do the intro? So the intro is that we are back with one of our prime shows. In fact, the kind of show that kicked off this long-term relationship we've been in. And that, my friend, is the first week metagame roundup. This time, it's for Kaldheim. And so basically what we're going to be doing this entire episode is just talking about new decks, new meta, and looking at what is fresh. And I have to say, Kovac Go Blue, that I have definitely been enjoying this new standard format the most since, honestly, since before Zendikar Rising was released. Like, really? Yes. Wow. Like, I, I have not enjoyed standard as much since, yeah, since before Omnath showed up on the scene. So they gotcha. Have- all right. Well, that's really exciting. I'm I'm glad to hear it, and I'm curious what you've been playing. So this is going to be fun. Awesome, awesome. So, how about yourself, my friend? Like, how just before we get into the technicalities, how has it been feeling to you, and are you having fun? Oh, you had to ask, didn't you? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> Our champion of standard (laughs) with head and hands making the confession. I'm not having fun right now, dude. Oh no, buddy. I'm I'm so sorry to hear that. What's what's been going on, bro? I feel that there's just no hope for blue cards and white cards (laughs) to be playing for the decks I like to play. There's just no hope. And worse than that. Worse than that. There's just this menace. This menace on the ladder. It's just... It's it's out there. You run into it just when you're starting to win streak. Just when you're starting to get a little confidence. Just when you're starting to say, this build might be okay. Just when you're starting to feel yourself. You know, you, you run into it every time. They mulligan. And then they mulligan. <laughs> yep. And then they mulligan. <laughs> yep. And then they mulligan. And, and then you they have keep that, that sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach, right? <laughs> and they play their temple, and they keep it on top. And then if you close your eyes or just go get a beverage after playing your first land, you will return to a board state that features one, at least one coma. <laughs> and sometimes Ugin's and Curavest the Sea Gods as well. Uh. And there's nothing to be done. The game is over. It's just nothing. Yep. It feels so bad. I got on the draw. I was on the draw. I got tur- to, turn to coma three games in a row. <laughs> How? You know, that really is statistically unlikely. <sighs> I don't think so. I think that <laughs> everything's rigged against me. And for the first time ever, I felt like I really might have what it takes to be one of those people on Reddit who just posts about how everything's rigged and Wizards is terrible and they ruined the game and I'm going to uninstall and never play again. <laughs> for just, for, for a few moments, that's, I, I thought maybe that was me now. 
Maybe this is what it takes to get there. Oko, I can handle. But Coma? On turn two? Three games in a row? <laughs> You're lucky I'm even here, man. It's by sheer force of will that I still <laughs> exist as a magic playing entity. Kavako Blue, I'm sorry to I'm sorry I have to be the one to break this to you, my friend. But are you aware that the color black exists in magic? Are you aware of this beautiful color? Like I said, <laughs> like I said, I'm not having fun because I can't play the magic <laughs> I want to play. I have to play this weird deformity of magic where I have to consider how to stop a turn to instant for two <laughs> mana. And I hate it. I don't want miscast in my Yorian deck. I really don't. Yeah, you don't want to have to be, like, main decking the gate just to frickin' snipe that deck on the ladder. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, no, that doesn't... The gate doesn't help. You're just on the draw every time. Yeah, on the draw. <laughs> Always the way, my friend. Always the way. You know what happened the last time I faced one of those mages in the best of one queue? Go ahead. They So they dropped their turn to... Ugin, but I had happened to be on the play, so I'd managed to go goose into cultivate, and so I was able to hit their turn two Ugin with my turn three binding the old gods. And then you know what happened after that, Covert Go Blue? A few turns later, they were able to do it again. And you know what they got? They got the serpent, the big coma, and they dropped that down. And you know what I did, Covert Go Blue? I played Extinction Event. And you know how I ended up winning that game, Covert Go Blue? I could tell that they had a third. They had a third one in hand, man. They had a third Tybalt's Trickery in hand. But me and my sharks, we just Shark Typhoon. We just didn't cast a spell for the rest of the game, and we beat the ever-living pus out of that deck. And that, my friend, is how to deal with that deck. On the ladder is just to play Sultai, like your boy Arjuna. <laughs> I don't know what I hate more. The... Tybalt's trickery players or you for winning and totally deflating my story and my rage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, CGB, I just think you need to rediscover the color black. That's all I'm saying, my friend. That's all I'm saying. But yes, this is a deck that we actually missed uh, the last time around. I, I can't believe that we didn't find the room in our episode to talk about it. But it has been just creating an incredible amount of outrage in, in the general airwaves, and not just in standard either. This card is stretching back. People are, like, casting turn two Emrakuls. They're doing all kinds of nonsense in the older formats as well. So, yeah, so somehow we managed to avoid talking about this, probably because we were just riding the new set high and we didn't want to dip into the lows. So, and, and actually, as a result of getting sick of playing against decks like that, and like the like the mono white nut curve on the best of one ladder, I decided to start playing best of three. And I've actually been super enjoying this format playing best of three ever since then. Yeah, I'm thinking about it and I hate it. <laughs> you know, here's, okay, CGB, here's my version of your story, all right? This is what happens to me on the ladder, all right? You ready? Just, just let me make one thing clear before you just go off and dig me a... <laughs> A deeper <laughs> grave. Sometimes you just need to vent, man. Sometimes you just need to let it out, and you don't want the solution, man. So, sometimes you just you just gotta let it out for your sanity, dude. And when people try to help you, you just want to crush their face. <laughs> <laughs> but go That's ahead, true. tell it. Go ahead. What what were you gonna say? I'm being a bad friend, you know. Um, podcast listeners, we're gonna model some good friendship here right now because I was a bad friend because Kovaco Blue was was a grown up enough to come to me and be vulnerable and just say, you know what, Arjuna, I'm having a hard time. And you know what I did? I, I immediately I shared my pain. Yeah, I shared my yeah, pain. He bared his soul. He shared he shared his pain. And I did the one thing you should never do as a friend, which was I immediately told him how to fix his problem and how I had fixed that problem for myself. And that was a douche move and for that I apologize. <laughs> I apologize, Kovac. Right. Okay. You deserve better in our relationship. All right. Thank you. So here's my pain, all right? Okay. This is what's been happening for me is I've been playing against these decks on the play, of course, that go turn one, speaker of the heavens. Turn two, the cleric that puts counters on things. Turn three, sky mall. 
And you know what is super annoying about these decks, Kovac Go Blue? Is I always have I always have the answers. I have the answers. I kill their things and I grind them down. But you know what never happens? They never seem to draw their fifth land drop. They never seem to draw anything except the exact gas they needed to get them out of the exact situation they were in. Oh, they need an apparition to deal with my onboard stuff. They get an apparition. Oh, they need an indestructible thing. All right, yeah, they top deck their freaking Heliod. Oh, they just need another Sky Mall to get in those two extra points of hasty damage. They top deck the Sky Mall. How do people play this deck with a normal draw? And when does the draw ever arrive, which is a normal draw? I do not comprehend. Is there some best of one trickery magic that I'm missing here, Kovac Go Blue? Yeah, yeah, you are. Do you want to know what it is? Tell me what. Is it because I'm not playing white? <laughs> no, it's it's because the shuffler is rigged, of course. Of course. Yeah, it hates you. It loves others, especially those who play white. And it makes sure that, you know, you never get too high on your horse thinking you're all good at the game. You just got to sometimes get whited out, man. Because this is what never seems to happen, all right? I can't remember the last time I played against one of these decks where they went like turn one Doggo, turn two nothing, turn three Linden, turn four Linden, turn five Heliod. Like what? Like where are those draws? I never see those draws. Even though these people are freaking main decking like 16 three drops, I never see it, Covert Go Blue. Why do I never see it? You never see it because, well, you're not whitelisted. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what's funny? I feel like it goes something like this. You're not whitelisted. And then for a while, you're whitelisted. But then when you get too high and mighty, then you get blacklisted, dude. Then you find out you're really not whitelisted. Yeah, yep. yeah. You end up yep. in like the yep. death sea spot. Yep. And then you get the nut low for a day or two. And you get to feel <laughs> how it feels right uh, and and that's when the hatred and the bile and the temptation to uninstall and maybe a few keyboards and mice get broken i don't know maybe <laughs> sometimes maybe your new webcam gets ordered that week right <laughs> mysteriously <laughs> but you know what we it's magic we get uh, through it uh and i feel like this has been cathartic and i feel like there should be a twitter account where all it does is just share the nastiest, saltiest stuff just to get it out there. You know, for the good of the, for the good of the land, somebody needs to make a Twitter account where we can just post screenshots of all the BS we go through to play Magic the Gathering. That's what I think. Somebody really smart should make one. I'm so shocked and surprised and pleased that you happen to mention that, Covert Go Blue, because actually, da 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 fanfare. <laughs> We have one. So, the illustrious folks here at the Arena Craft Podcast have seen fit to create an account. This account is called The Salt Flats MTG. And this account is precisely where you can go onto Twitter, and whenever you want to post your bile, your hatred, your suffering, your loathing about this, this Arena Magic The Gathering game, you can do it there. And you know what? It's a safe space. You know what happens to me, CGB? Probably about once a day, I go on Twitter. And well, I mean, there's only one thing that you're actually supposed to do on Twitter, right? Twitter was designed for the express purpose of doing one thing and one thing alone. And that thing is bitching. <laughs> I was going to say complaining, but okay, you're right. There you go. <laughs> right? One, one of those two things, right? You're they, right. They yep. gave you just enough words per tweet to allow you to get like a full complaint in and that's it and then they cut you off so i go once a day i go on there and i'm about to write some kind of just awfully complainy tweet and then i think arjuna you're better than that you know what you're a grown-up and this account isn't for you complaining this is so that our wonderful crafties in the community can find good decks and you know learn more about magic and get better and feel good about themselves and so i don't I don't send those, but now, now we have a place where those can go. So, crafties, if you are getting tired of all of this BS on the ladder, you too have a place to go. I will put a link to that in the show notes, but now whenever you're on Twitter and you're just feeling the wrath, just, just send it to the salt flats and all will be well. Head to, head to, 
Is it at these salt flats? Yes. At these salt flats and cast your wrath of freaking God. <laughs> Do it now and we will we will retweet your suffering. All right. So now that we've gotten that uh, healthy amount of discharge out of the way, we want to talk about this new format. So CGB, obviously there's more than just Tybalt's trickery happening in standard right now. And so I thought that Perhaps like a cool place for us to start would be for us to just discuss the decks that we've been playing and thinking about on the ladder a little bit. And then we're going to go into some tournament results from this last week and just see what people are playing to actually reach success. Does that sound like a good format? Sounds awesome. Okay. All right. So um, let's start with you, Kovac Go Blue. Now, I'm sure that you've been up to all kinds of like Azarius Yarian nonsense this past week is that like is that still what you've been playing and trying to make work or have you already moved on and and started trying some other stuff well i i was trying to do all that the intro wasn't a complete work to totally sell the salt mines in a more than 10 minute (laughs) ramble i i came out you know trying to figure out cool stuff to do with yorian and grabbing counter spells to deal with this and that and a new deck basically showed up in the meta that, in my opinion, um, in my personal take so far, makes Yorian almost completely unplayable, and it's the Is It Tempo deck. I hate this deck in Best of One so much because I think it actually has a losing record against everything but Yorian, and people are still playing it. That was my experience playing the deck. I couldn't beat... I. Okay, I I actually looked up the stats because it felt so skewed to me, and I used MTGA Assistant to look at my win rates on the play and the draw, which I don't normally do because I don't like putting too much in stats. But in like 30 games with this deck, I was 80 plus percent on the play and subbed and like 20 percent, like around really close to 20 percent on the freaking draw. And in best of one, when that's all that matters and there's no sideboard, to me, I can't play that deck. Like, that's not for me. That's just flipping coins. Not the way I want to play Magic. I tried everything. I tried Cinderclasm. I tried the new... I I tried every kind of sweeper and every kind of instant removal spell and every little adjustment with Gadwicks and Ops and, you know, other things that you can do to just try to stay alive. And it didn't matter. Because when the opponent plays turn one selfless savior, turn two luminarch aspirant, you are dead. And there was just not a lot of ways out. So uh, I'm struggling with that deck because I actually think I should like it. But it's not Simic Flash. Simic Flash had Night Pack Ambusher that could be there on turn three and just take over a game if the opponent was trying to aggro Zerg rush you. Um, and this doesn't. It, it sits there and takes the beating and often casts a gold span dragon and says, I guess I'll block with it now. And that never happens. <laughs> it's uh, not pretty. It's really not pretty in best of one. Yeah, I I tend to agree with you. I feel like that is a tempo deck is a strong deck, but I totally agree. I feel like it has a fair number of weaknesses and I, I'm not confident that it has the answers to deal with them. Mm-hmm. Don't most gruel lists just like charge right over the top of that deck? I don't know if I've beaten a gruel list with it yeah. yet. Um, I, I think one time I was on the play and I opened with like frostbite your innkeeper, essence scatter bone crush your brush fire, essence scatter your love struck beast, and I still lost that game because I never found a dragon in time before they resolved a few creatures and beat me to death. So yeah. you just can't hang with the card advantage. You don't have that many ways to get cards. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I mean, I've definitely lost to the deck as well, but just anecdotally, I haven't been particularly impressed by it either. It just feels like it's playing a little bit of an old school style of of magic game to me. And I feel like the things have to line up just right for that deck. If they don't draw their dragons, I feel like they just get buried. Yeah, that that was really hard, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what else do you lean on? Like, Bone Crush is a great card. You know, that's a great card to kind of bridge you in that deck. But, like, I just feel like they don't have that much else to lean on if the A plan isn't really working. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it does feel like a, just a little bit of a glass cannon to me. I think that definitely play skill comes in with it now and i'm not saying that you're a bad player cgb i'm just saying that oh it's hard to play it's really it really is it took me about 15 games to play it yeah like one time where i felt like yes i played that well yeah 
totally because yeah you, you have to get your foretells right you're it's like i feel like if you misplay any turn if you spend your mana inefficiently any turn if you misjudge your role in the game state any turn you just lose on the spot so yeah very 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 punishing deck punishing to play with and punishing to play against which uh and reminds me of of rogues actually honestly yeah yeah and i was gonna say like my Yorian decks, my my various Azorius decks that I love so much. Like I think I I know rogues. You know I've seen you. I know how to beat you. I run my escape cards. I, I sequence all my removal all tight. You know I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. But then uh, this is it deck. It it's awkward because it's popular enough in best of three that it's super popular in best of one right now too. And I. Like, I think it's over 80% against Yorian. If you hate Yorian, is it just destroys it. Like, just wrecks it. You keep, they, they are not going to pressure you, so you have all the time you need to assemble the combo. CGB, what's the combo? The combo is gold span dragon and two counter spells. <laughs> Pretty much unrecoverable if you can do that, because you counter something, they'll, they'll like wait for you to play the dragon, so you need to counter something the turn you play the dragon, and then you counter their big follow-up ECD or Binding of the Titans or whatever, or Yorian, and it's just, they're, they're dead now. The, the tempo is too much. Their life total is falling to pieces. Yep, yep. <laughs> So yeah, definitely a solid deck, and um, we'll talk about it a little bit later. It's definitely putting up some top eight performances in these uh, tournaments that we're going to look at as well. So that is definitely a deck to be aware of on the ladder. Okay, anything else that you have been playing either with or against that's really standing out to you? Every single aggro deck I play <laughs> seems really good. It, like the mono-colored snow decks or any deck with showdown of the scald seems really good and i don't have any problem winning when i play those it's just not the style of magic i like so i always like i i i get mad i ember cleave a few you know helpless souls on the ladder i always feel bad like you know i'll, I'll go into a match and the person will be like hello and then they'll shoot me good game and then they'll shoot me the the purple hedron with the heart over it and then i come out in fervent champion into you know one two three four ember cleave curve smash them to death and yeah just another fan that i lost <laughs> You know, it's good to see your range, though, CGB, you know? These people are expecting Yorian, and then they just get frickin', like, Javier Dominguez in the face on turn one, right? <laughs> they do, they do. It's. I hope they, I really hope my reputation gets them to mulligan, too, for, like, a good control hand, you <laughs> totally. know? Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I definitely think these Showdown of the Scalds, is definitely proving to be one of the week one all stars of the meta game. I think those two cards actually, uh, Gold Spend Dragon and Showdown of the Scalds, are definitely proving to be the top two cards in the Kaldheim standard meta right now. And if you add Tybalt's Trickery, that's three freaking red cards. That is three red cards. That's true. That is. Mm. Red's on the map, my friends. It I'm just not happy. Just in case you are starting to worry that red had lost its grip. And you know what else is interesting as well? We've been complaining about the lack of red one drops or really good engine cards like Light Up the Stage or Runaway Steamkin, stuff like this. And Wizards is like, yeah, play more four and five drops. Yeah, play more yeah. four and five drops. Have it fun. doesn't matter if your one drops are horrible if your four drop is showdown of the skulls. It, yeah. Like your one drop is suddenly an all star. Oh, you know? totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been just messing around and building lists that run cards like, like the Fairy Guide Mother, cards which ordinarily just you wouldn't even really think about playing in standard. But when you have a card like Showdown of the Skulls, cards like that it just can actually be pretty fantastic. Wow. So. Yeah, I think Showdown is really changing the way that people view playing these decks, and it's definitely the aggro top end that people are looking for. So I think that if you're playing any red and or white deck, and you're not splashing for Showdown of the Scalds, you're probably doing it wrong at this point, would be my guess. I, I think it's really hard in the, the snow decks. Yeah, like the mono red and mono white snow, I think are still 
It, it, I can't say for sure that they're worse than like a Boros deck because Faceless Haven is also a Faceless heck of a Haven card. is good. I, yeah. I'm talking about best of one, of course. In best of three, I think you are crazy if you aren't playing Showdown of the Skulls. Like crazy. Because I don't know how you hang in post-board matchups where you have to grind if some somebody has it and you don't. Um, so just to be clear on where I fall on that. Yeah, I mean... I think if you're not running Showdown, you're probably just like a four of Embercleave deck. Or maybe you're just one of these decks that's just trying to like Sky Maul on three and just get your opponent dead before they can realistically go off with Showdown. So yeah. so I feel like you have to have a plausible like turn four, turn five kill in your deck and be able to consistently hit it in order to not be running the showdown but i totally agree like if if the game is going to go any longer than turn five you're going to get absolutely buried by these showdown decks and i love showdown but man is it clunky we talked about it last week but man is it clunky in a control deck oh yeah oh, oh. yeah feels so bad let's talk about this for a moment because i have been seeing some of these lists show up where people are playing showdown and they're also playing a bunch of ember cleaves and great henges and gold span dragons and all these really expensive cards and i'm just wondering like is that really is that really what you're supposed to be doing with showdown is playing other five drops and expensive cards like it just seems from everything that i've seen and thought about the card i feel like your curve should probably just top out at the showdown right because you just get so much value out of going off am i on the wrong path there i i don't think you're wrong but i think that there's a question of whether or not these decks are built around showdown of the scalds or whether or not showdown of the scalds was slotted into an existing deck because I think if you're just adding it to an existing deck, you just want to play it like probably as the last card out of your hand as a reload. But if your deck is built around Showdown with a super low curve, Shepherds of the Flock, ways to replay it, ways to blink it or abuse it, then you just want it on the board pretty much as soon as possible, pumping up all your little dorks. So I, I, when I look at the Gruul Adventure decks that become Nye Adventures and they play like three Showdowns and two Embercleaves and three Henges, I'm like, yeah, they're still just Gruul, but they don't want to get out attritioned. Like they, they want Showdown for the post board games against other, like, decks like them and control decks they don't want to be the one without the showdown in those matchups they but they still want to be playing gruel you know so let me get this straight these decks are running innkeeper and henge and showdown yeah they're just they're like i'm not content drawing a million cards i actually need to draw a billion cards some of them play vivian too (laughs) Maybe that's the right way to play Magic now, but to me it just seems, I don't know, like how much more card advantage did you need? I didn't feel like Gruul was particularly suffering for card advantage. It's the way to play aggro Magic in 2021. I can't get like a two mana draw two in blue. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, where what happened to uh, um, what what was that? The Voyage card, right? That drew two and and you discarded one? Chart of course. Chart of course, right? I don't yeah, I feel like that's the card that blue's been missing, honestly. Or something I like even it. I play that in most of my blue decks too. It requires a creature. It's better with a creature. It is better with a creature, that's true. Anyway, yeah, I, this is a card which like we haven't found the optimal shells for. It. Yeah, I say shells because I feel like there's probably more than one shell that can be optimized around this. My prediction, I might end up being wrong about this, but my prediction is that there isn't just going to be like one showdown deck, which which is the one to rule them all. I think that this card can fit in a number of different archetypes, and I think it's going to be, you know, like a bit more of a great henge, right? Where like it, it finds its way in a number of different archetypes, and it's powerful in all of them. <laughs> you can play any showdown deck you like. You can have a Naya showdown deck. You can have a Mardu, Mardu mm-hmm. showdown deck. Eh, mm-hmm. eh? yeah, uh-huh. mono red showdown. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. You can, <laughs> Boros showdown is the classic. You might say. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Grixis showdown. You know, I digress. Crafties, if you're looking for a really strong deck to play moving forward, I would just definitely consider building a deck around one of those two cards. You could even put them both in the same deck. They show up in the same deck quite often. 
Yeah, probably the safest crafts in the set as far as, like, these are going to be good for a long time. Yep, exactly. They're good now. They will be good in the future, just almost assuredly. So I I have continued on my Sultai nonsense, and I really, I I think that this deck has something in the format. Um, But I've been running into a lot of other ultimatum decks on the ladder, which I find surprising. There's actually, uh, I've run into a number of Genesis ultimatum decks on the ladder, which I wasn't really expecting. And a lot of people trying out the Coma Serpent, which I just still, I still don't understand it, CGB. I still don't understand it. It's really good on turn two, bro. (laughs) Is it it better than Kiara Best the Sea God, though? I, yeah no <laughs> yeah yeah come on no. did you know did you realize that yorian is a serpent oh <laughs> you can sack your yorian to your coma <laughs> yes you can so you can if you have your yorian on the field when you play coma you already have a serpent to sacrifice to protect coma with I mean, that is pretty gas. I got to give it to you. <laughs> Did you know it they is. both die horribly to Extinction Event? I mean, you you seem to really think that that's what the format is. I, I will tell you, I think Extinction Event, Doomscald and Doomscar and all. Like, I think Extinction Event is the only Wrath that's good. I right agree. Now. Especially with the Mono White deck being so popular, and especially with just all the other nonsense going around that is very hard to kill indestructible is certainly a thing yeah it's also just it's not targeted for the dragon it's so there's a number of things about it that are just like really 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 handy so yeah i i don't know i've been having an incredible amount of success just jamming extinction event on the ladder i think that that card is about as good as it's ever been in standard definitely recommend leaving home with that one Anyway, I think one of the things that's most exciting to me, though, is that I feel like this format is not even close to being solved. People have been saying, like, oh, Eldraine's still here, none of the new stuff is very good. I don't think that's true. We're definitely seeing some of the front runners. we're definitely seeing some of the cards, which are, you know, some of the the more heavy-hitting, likely-to-be format staples emerge. That's definitely happening. But, like... I just feel like no one has really found the ideal shells for any of these cards yet, and that excites me. I I don't know. I think that there's still a lot to look forward to in this format. Yeah, I am curious. So far in things like the standard challenge online, most of the decks that are winning do play a good amount of new cards, but I think that Rogues and Gruel came out of last season being the decks to beat, and weirdly, I, it, I, I feel like they're both still the best decks i don't know if any of the new decks are ready for the challenge yet because it's so hard to focus on one or the other um so i'm not i i'm i I get where why people would be frustrated because the rogues didn't get worse and the the green red and green act cards got better so yeah and white is trying, but white's getting splashed now, you know, for showdown. But that's that's about what white's doing, other than the mono white deck. And uh, it does feel a little samey, uh, except when there is a showdown going off. Most things feel very similar, and there's still the groan of turn one rune crab. So, I, I get why people would be wondering and saying it's not solved. I agree, it's not solved, but. Uh, some people, I think, are frustrated just to play it right now and throw in some Tybalt's Trickery. I get where they're coming from. I'm, I am I really want some new decks, but I don't know if the format is going to be one where new brews do something compared to one where you just have to find the way to put all the pieces together the right way for that particular week for the meta that you expect and see what happens. Yeah. I, I will give you that I do agree that Demir, Demir Rogues and, you know, Gruel Adventure or Gruel in some configuration do still seem to be the top of the format. And with Rogues being the, the really egregious one, because I think Gruel does have new tools and they are showing up and they're probably going to be correct to play in some number. So the the Rogues is really standing out to me as like the, the yawn deck that you're still running into on the ladder that plays literally no new cards and is just still really good. So I do agree that that is quite frustrating. We're going to talk about 
Uh, and let's just get into it, man. I feel like this now is a good time for us to transition into looking at some of these deck lists because I think we there this stuff like for example Rakdos. Man, Rakdos is back on the menu, and if there's one matchup that Rogues has typically struggled with, it's Rakdos. So we're going to look at some MTG Melee uh, tournament results here and discuss some deck lists. And the first ones I want to talk about are there were two SCG uh, Tour Online Satellite tournaments. And the first one I want to talk about is number two. And this actually just wrapped up today. Uh, Both of these actually were played today as of this recording fresh content baby yeah, dude so yeah we are, we are fresh on it. content let's go so this number two tournament was actually taken down by in the top eight we actually had two copies of rakdos mid-range one at number one one at number three pretty impressive start here Felipe did it oh that's awesome she's yeah. she's a streamer yeah Felipe carola yep in number three with rakdos mid-range she is a notable rakdos mage uh, loves the color black in general. And yeah, so she's gas. If uh, if y'all aren't watching her on Twitch, you definitely should be. She's super friendly and also super good at magic. So go check her out. So, okay, um, we'll, we'll look at her deck in a moment. Let's look at number one by Vito Tomasiccio. I'm hoping I pronounced that properly. I'm sure you did. It's Vito. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Vito. Hey, it's Vito. All right, So so let's look at it. We've got... Two Liliana Waker of the Dead. So in the creature slot, we've got four Egon, God of Death. Nice to see that showing up. We also have four Bone Crusher Giant, three Valky slash Tybalt, three Goldspan Dragon, three Croxa, two Rankle, two Skyclave Shade. We also running uh, four Timurit Calls the Dead. And you know, we've got some Shats of Skull Smashings and a little bit of removal. So this man like this is an interesting deck list to me i feel like mid-range is the right name for this deck because you're like is it a graveyard deck kind of but it's also got haste creatures in it it's even got like this powerful top end planeswalker so it's this deck it really is kind of like a little of everything when i'm looking at it which probably makes it fairly difficult to play against right because you're maybe gearing up for like some long attritiony graveyard game and then your opponent just goes like gold span dragon into rankle you're dead i don't know like what what do you make of this list cgb i think this is a Really good example of what we talked about a little that we didn't have to try too hard with Goldspan Dragon. Like this one doesn't have any way to target your own dragon to make more treasures or counter spells to interact with the opponent when they interact with your dragon. They're just saying, hey, I'm going to throw down these hasty creatures, Rankle and Goldspan to get you dead. And I like it quite a bit. I'm really curious. I mean, I, I want to see it in action. I'm guessing you always play Throne of Death but maybe Egon does come down sometimes and just rumble. Um, kind of awesome to see four of that card. And you've got Tybalt, the Cosmic Imposter. So games that drag out, you've got this Planeswalker that just starts pulling you ahead in the value game. I found that Tybalt is a really cool card. And it's very awesome to play it, and it feels good. But I think opponents are more scared of it than it is actually good. I've played it several times for seven, plus it, gotten a land and like a, a spell from my opponent's deck that I can't really use. That doesn't really work for me because it was, you know, obviously put in their deck to work with their cards. And the opponent like just hovers over the tibble and they just scoop. <laughs> Like they w- they refuse to play another turn, and I'm yeah. like, if I if I plus it and hit like that again, I'm not exactly winning here. It it's yeah. it's a good card, but I don't think it's an absolutely bonkers card. I think it's I think it's a lot better than not having a Tybalt Cosmic Imposter option on Valky, but I don't think it's broken. You know, it's so funny you say that. It's reminding me of a game I actually played versus a Rakdos deck where I got a Tybalt down. I must have plussed this Tybalt like six times in this game because my opponent kept bone crushing it. My opponent kept trying to, you know, like haste creature, keeping it off of ultimate, right? And so I got to plus 
this Tybalt. It was doing nothing for me, dude. Yeah, it was just like you said. I, was, I, I drew a bunch of lands. I hit like some useless like two drops off of it. And the only reason I didn't lose that game is that my opponent was also just top decking miserably. Just like any other card draw based thing, man, like you can whiff horribly, you know, you can you can get the Tybalt equivalent of like Escape to the Wilds hitting five lands kind of a thing. So yeah, definitely not an auto win card by any means. I'll also say that every plus from Tybalt adds two cards to that exile zone, and the minus eight gets both graveyards into that exile zone. So in MTG Arena, that, you know, the area to the right of your hand, let's just say on mobile, it's not very traversable. (laughs) (laughs) It's not good. It is not good to ultimate your Tybalt on mobile. (laughs) I really like this Rakdos deck, and I want to try it out. Um, If for nothing else... To just torture rogues a bit. Yeah, this deck has got to have some at least game against rogues, I think, for sure. Yeah, really solid place to start if you're worried about that matchup on the ladder. And I would also say it's probably... Rakdos, its big Achilles heel has always been that it can't beat Yorian to save its life. But if this is it tempo deck is as nasty to Yorian in best of three as it is in best of one like, then maybe you're not going to see as much Yorian as we thought we would. Yep, yep, totally. Well, which is born out. I mean, if you look, if I'm looking down this list... I don't see any Yorian. I don't see any Yorian at all. Zero Sky Noodle, what a sad day. It is a sad day indeed. But, you know, just just adding credence to my, uh, <laughs> to my notion that it's one of the biggest traps we've ever seen in Standard. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so let's get into this list by Filippo, which came in third, is actually a very different deck, which I think is also really cool. So Filippo managed to get to number three, and why don't you uh, just read down this one for us, CGB? Well, it's definitely a Rakdos Sacrifice, uh, kind of steal, yoink your stuff and throw it into the trash kind of deck as we've seen here and there especially with witches oven and cauldron familiar but those cards the at least the cauldron familiar is gone so it's a new take on the deck it's got a liliana waker of the dead again which is kind of interesting it also has two rankles and two valkies so some of the three croxes these are some of the cards they had in common but this deck has four woe striders and three mire tritons it's got two bone crusher giants it's got two immersturm predator it has an Ox of Aganis, three Acroan Wars, four Claims, two Timurite Calls the Dead, two Blood Chiefs, there's three Village Rites, and two Shredded Sails. So it really is this big time collection of like Rakdos' greatest hits, but there's no Egon God of Death. And something I want to say about the deck that got first place, if I remember, that deck didn't have a lot of ways to fill their graveyard, just the Throne of Death. Right when I, when we, when you're looking at that, like I'm not seeing the Meyer Triton. It's not running Meyer Triton. It, you're right. It's really not running a lot of. I mean, Timurit calls the dead's probably the yep, main way. It's got four Timurits. Yep, that's that and Egon. It's saying no more of these little two ones with Death Touch. We don't need that. And uh, Philippa is still sticking with the Meyer Triton for the sacrifice list. Yeah, this is definitely looks like a like a lower curve deck to me and definitely a deck which is looks to be teched a little bit more expecting gruel if I had to guess. Oh yeah. When you steal their fatties, it, they 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 feel it. Exactly. Or maybe maybe even this was also a deck with, you know, a card like Showdown in mind, you know, expecting there to be a number of cheap creatures to just, you know, yank a bunch of them because yeah, 3 a crow in war plus 4 claim the first bomb like that's a statement of intent right there. <laughs> like, it's very vile. Very vile. I'm planning to steal minimum two of your things each game. And some game. I mean, I can easily imagine games CGB where like this deck gets down a woe strider and then it's just like four turns in a row. You play a creature and they just yank it, right? So that's, that's got to start feeling pretty freaking devastating after a while. Yeah, I, I imagine she's not here to make friends. Um, I, I am going to I'm gonna look on uh, Twitch. I want to see if she streamed it. I might watch this later. Yeah, she probably did. Yeah, she probably did. How about Immerstrom Predator? Have you played with this card? I have not played with it. I've played a little bit against it. It has not 
impressed me so far. That's mostly because it just hasn't been good against the styles of deck that I've been playing. But I have seen it overall do work. You know, honestly, I think one of the biggest challenges to Immerstone Predator in the format right now is that Rankle exists. I think in, you know, a lot of deck lists might just prefer running Rankle. I would be interested to hear what Philippa thinks about, you know, comparing the two cards after running a deck with two of each to split down the middle. For me, I feel like there are definitely some matchups in which the Predator is going to be good. Like, I actually imagine that Predator goes up in value if you're playing against uh, Goldspan Dragon lists, you know, because like having an indestructible flying blocker, especially one which it only takes one counter on it to get up to trading range. So I feel like if, yeah. you, can, if, if you can stick one of these against a Goldspan deck, you're probably feeling pretty good. Yeah, uh, definitely. I am not good at playing these type of decks and the Predator specifically like really messes with me because you have to time your sacrifice right if you want to attack with it. You gotta get into combat then sacrifice the thing because it taps it. And like there's all these little things with it I am not that good at. But uh, it is a cool card. I would love to see it get more play. So I'm, I'm rooting for the Predator. Yeah, I think it has a place. I don't think the Predator is going to end up being a gold spend dragon in the format. I don't think it's going to be an auto-include in Rakdos lists. My guess is that it's going to end up being a little bit more of a surgical threat, a little bit more of a scalpel than a cannon. So uh, let, let's see how that plays out. That's definitely an interesting one to pick out. The second place in this SCG number two was Will Pulliam playing Gruel Adventures. So definitely, you know, stuff that we're familiar with. However, they've definitely made some updates to the list with the new tech. So um, this list is definitely running, you know, all of your usual suspects. It's got four of each of Edgewall Innkeeper, Bone Crusher Giant, Lovestruck Beast, uh, Brushfire Elemental, and Kazandu Mammoth. So no surprises there. This list, however, is also running three Goldspan Dragons and two Questing Beasts, which I... Th- I'm pretty sure that Questing Beast has not been standard in a lot of these Gruel lists up until now. Am I right about that? Or have I just not been playing standard? There was a time where all the Questing Beast went away, and then Doom Foretold came back and had a pretty good matchup for like a minute with Gruel, and then all the Questing Beast came back, okay. and by the by the last championship, Autumn had four. Oh, in wow. The list that, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah. I'm a little bit behind the times then. Once you have one really solid haste creature in your deck it really encourages you to play more so and this deck you know with the four brush fires the three gold spans and the two questing beasts that's just a nice start to like a a good old haste package there so that's pretty cool to see uh but other than that you know the list looks pretty stock they've got three ember cleaves three great henges one a crow and war in the main and, you know, the sideboard has a bunch of, you know, Ox of Agonis. It has some Phoenix of Ash for that haste, to, you know, increase the haste game plan, a little bit of resiliency and good against rogues. So um, anyway, it's just cool to see this is basically an updated take on the familiar deck, uh, you know, with Goldspan Dragon being the big headliner here. Yeah, by, by updated, we put three of the new mythic in the deck. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's good. I mean, it's good enough that they found room for it, right? I think it's worth noting, because I said this in one of my videos not that long ago, like, there's no, all, all the cards that might try to be cute with the dragon, like the, the, the cards that give it hexproof or inscription of insight, you know, weird, like, combat trips, tricks, snakeskin veil, none of that, just none of that. We're just going to use the treasure to play more awesome cards from our hand and not worry if the dragon dies. Yeah, it's just a good card. Just put it put it in your decks. All right, now let's take a look at fourth place Kazuki Kawata's Naya Adventures deck. So this is definitely a list that's been going around. We mentioned it last week, and uh, the deck's definitely been performing. So give us a quick rundown of this one, CGB. Oh my lord! All right, the new—I I just got done talking about a lack of cuteness. If, if <laughs> this this is cuteness in spades, so uh, I think I'm just—I'm going to quickly summarize the package of here's some adventure creatures, here's some Edgewall Innkeeper, here's Kazandu Mammoth, here's two great henges and two Ember Cleaves. 
But this deck also, for the white splash, has four showdowns, so really means it. There are two giant killers. Those are the other two white cards in the main deck. There's two more giant killers in the sideboard and one, one little copy of Elspeth Conquers Death. Then we've got two main deck ooze, which comes and goes. There are three main deck goldspan dragons, and then we get cute with it, because there's three instants in the deck to go with that dragon. Two snakeskin veils, which can give it hexproof and a plus one, plus one counter. One raking claws. And if you didn't play much limited, you might have forgotten that this is a card that you can cycle for two mana, but has other text, where for one red and one other, as an instant, you can give a creature double strike. So it's it's another Embercleave. It is. It's another Embercleave. <laughs> and it's the, both of those cards are only in the deck because of Goldspan Dragon. But I will note those cards do get better with Showdown of the Skald. So, you know, one of the things that a lot of people keep harping on about Showdown is that you need cheap stuff to play with it to really go off with it. And, you know, both take advantage of having access to all of those cards, which go away in a turn but also getting more counters off of it, right? So in the worst case scenario, I mean, worst case scenario is you draw a bunch of these in your opening hand and you feel sad. But otherwise, if you draw these and they're not particularly good, but they're just cheap stuff that you can play off of your showdown and still continue to get counters on your creatures. So I kind of like that interaction too. I feel like this deck gives you a plausible excuse for what you might do with these cards if you don't have a gold spend dragon on the battlefield so i like that aspect i feel like with the week i've had i am def it's definitely in my range to if the opponent plays turn two edge wall innkeeper and i turn two try to stomp it and they snake skin veil me i might i might uninstall <laughs> So I don't know if this is the way that you play Magic CGB, but this is what happens to me is when I put Snakeskin Veil in my deck, I top deck it in the mid to late game on an empty board. But whenever I'm playing against an opponent, you know, they top deck it when it's the only card they need to save their Goldspan Dragon from destruction. So that's about how these games tend to go for me. I don't know about for you. Uh, take it to the salt. <laughs> take it to the salt flats. The salt Indeed. flats. The flats. Got it. Take it to the flats. All right. So, yeah, cool, cool deck. I definitely like what they've got going on here. And, you know, also just modest, modest with the two henge, two ember cleave. I re like these decks playing like three henge, three ember cleave, and four showdown just don't make sense to me, man. They really don't. Okay, let's see what else, if anything, is in this top eight of interest. Let's look at sixth place Gustavo Mendez playing... S oh, oh, no, no, no. Quickly. Let's do a quick Demir Rogue check for new cards. Okay. Just one time. All right. One time. Scanning fifth place Demir Rogue's player, uh, Matthias de la Parra. See him stepping out of their comfort zone, trying some of that, those hot new cards. Yep. Okay. Like there that. are, in oh, fact... okay. Yep, we yep. do have a couple. Yep, we've got a couple. So, Behold the Multiverse, there's one copy in the main. Which, by the way, there's two of one mind, four into the story, and one Behold the Multiverse. Do you like cards? I mean, this player clearly does. This actually is LSV's list from his article. Oh, really? Okay. This is his updated version. Yep, there's two, there's two Saw It Cummings, you know, for some universal counter appeal. And the sideboard is where you could almost call it spice if you squint really hard. There's two weathered runestone, which is probably there to hose Rakdos. It's the two mana artifact that doesn't let things enter the battlefield from graveyards. I wonder if they take out their lures. Yeah, interesting. I, or I, I guess it's always in. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to uncompanion your lures, but I'm, I'm just like, I wonder. Could, could definitely hit you as well as the opponent for sure. Anyway, there's also two Crippling Fears, which is the choose a creature type and all things that aren't that type get minus three, minus three. Which I think was a good metagame call because you and I were both discussing when we previewed this card about how it would probably slot nicely into rogues. So turns out it's finding a home there for sure. I imagine the white aggro decks would particularly hate that card. Oh, yeah. Maybe rogues on ladder should be trying a, a Crippling Fear or two. Oh yeah, I mean it's a fantastic answer to the uh, the Hello Blade. I don't know, it's just it's good old rogues, but it it's rogues. You don't have to, man. We can move on. You don't have to find the words. There's, we all know 
Uh, we all know. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this Sultai control list because I have a feeling this is going to be some spicy, like spice, spice going on here. So, and yes, indeed, we do have it. So, Gustavo Mendez in sixth place with Sultai control. Going to read this off, and uh, this deck's. This deck's interesting. So we're running two Ashiok Nightmare Muse. We're also running two Coma Cosmos Serpent. Uh, and then we've got four Binding the Old Gods, three Shark Typhoon, three Extinction Event, two Blood Chief's Thirst, a whole bunch of instants in the form of this four Sark Cummings, four Juari Disruption, leaning heavily on that card. And then just like a bunch of removal spells. We've got some Behold the Multiverse, a few more counter spells here. So, I mean, this is like basically a good old-fashioned control deck where it's it's running just like very light on the threats i mean basically the way that this deck is looking to end the game is either through a shark or through resolving an ashiok or through killing its opponent with coma so just a couple kind of resilient or card advantageous threats and then the rest of the deck is just answers basically yep it's a blue black control deck the green has a scavenging ooze in the sideboard and four binding of the old gods, <clears throat> binding the old gods, sorry, and two comas. And that's it. Um, it's for win con and this very versatile new saga that also ramps you and fixes your mana, which is pretty freaking amazing. There's no Yorian, man. <laughs> like this, this deck started like Luis Salvato played this deck and, and a few other people have played on ladder. Uh, and it was like a deck with Yorian in like three in the main and one in the sideboard and it had Omen of the Sea and it, it was it was really cool. It, you know, you have Yorian, it goes with your coma and it blinks your binding of the old gods and, and this version doesn't have any I feel like I'm I'm hearing like the rantings of a CGB in his straight jacket, you know, from the, from the back, my heart is broken the back of the room. This, was, a, this was its chance, you man. It used to be so Yorian. beautiful. Yorian, they don't back. know what they're doing. Forgive them. <laughs> Forgive them. They don't know what they do. Anyway, this this is a bit of a meatball, I have to say. I, I'm still... A meatball? I, I'm just struggling with how anyone thinks that Coma Cosmos Serpent is a standard playable magic card. But I digress. I, I'm curious. If you took out your emergent ultimatums and all the nonsense you do with it and just put in... Like a few more counters and card draw and two comas would what would your win rate be like? I don't. I mean, I've been crushing those kind of decks on the ladder, so I, I'm I'm not a buyer. The greedier man. player always does. <laughs> I you know I'm not I'm not attached to emergent ultimatum by any means, but I just would rather be spending my seven mana on almost anything else, dude. Okay, okay. I just almost we'll see. almost anything else. I mean, this this card just dies. Like, like if you slam it on your turn without counter spell backup, your opponent can just heartless act it. It's a joke, dude. It's a, or like all of these uh, all of these gold span dragon lists are running brazen borrower, and like how how do you feel if you just tap seven mana to slam one of these things and your opponent just borrows it and then swings in with a dragon like that cannot feel great for you right i haven't, I haven't even crafted it i'm just <laughs> I'm just doing what i can over here although i think i think i'm gonna have to craft some just to stream snipe you and just backhand you a few times you yeah know? yeah i embarrassingly have lost to coma more than once so <laughs> i suppose but i but i still think it's bs man so it's BS. <laughs> so rounding out this top eight is a deck. There's a which... Sultai ramp right there. I'm oh, curious that's if true. it's the same or I'm just looking for Yorian. <laughs> just you, Yes! You found it. <laughs> are you are you happy? He found one in the top eight. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's an emergent ultimatum deck. <laughs> okay, well now you've got my attention. So why don't you do the honors on this one, CGB? There's too many cards. It's a Yorian deck. <laughs> okay. Um anyway. Wait a minute, what is actually going on? Dude, here? this is one of the weirdest decks I've ever seen in my life. Three copies of Tosky Bear of Secrets in your Yorian deck? What? I mean, damn. Well, what are your creatures? Um, there's Not very many. Four Tangled Florahedron, and there's a Kogla, and there's a Vorinclex. 
There's a Vorinclex, there's a Tybalt, there's a Pelucranos. Yeah, combining it with Alrin's Epiphany, that we really did it. Wait, is it? There's two Alrun's Epiphany. That's got to be it. So the idea is that you Alrun's Epiphany and then you play Toski? Yeah. To get that draw to on your extra turn? I, I don't know, man. I mean, Yarian, You have more Toskis than you have Alrun's Epiphany. Toski plus Yarian? It's a thing? <laughs> okay. Is it? How I about don't think this? so. How about with Varinclex, right? Because it has Trample. So maybe... But yeah, this this list is super weird, dude. I mean, let's let's read off these creatures here. So in addition to the four Tangled Florahedron, they do have three Toskis, one Kogla, one Varinclex, one Valky, and one Pelucranos. Can I just can I just say there's a fourth Toski in the in sideboard? The sideboard? <laughs> <laughs> See, Sorry to I just had to break in for that. I had to. I don't know, man. I there's got there's gotta be a I mean, maybe it's some kind of emergent ultimatum target for something. I don't know, man. I'm reaching. I would not play it in this deck myself, but there we go. So the rest of this deck, we've got some Maze Mind Tomes. We've got four copies of both Binding the Old Gods and Wolfalo Haven. We've got the one of Kiara Best the Sea God, which I think is pretty much obligatory in any emergent ultimatum deck. Deck is running four copies of Vastwood Surge, which is interesting, especially given the fact that I don't think it's running Cultivate, which is no just cultivate. another bizarre choice to me. No migration path either. Like what? Like we're starting our ramp on four? That's kind of what I'm getting from this list. There's Wolfolo Haven. I get Wolfolo Haven, right? And I guess the Tangled Florahedron. So that that's that was that was the choice instead. But this does seem it, it seems like there's some kind of weird subversive go wide Tosky theme. There's just like a. <laughs> but where are a... the creatures? <laughs> I know. Where are the tokens? I don't see them. There's no. This is. I, I was looking for the Scoot uh, Swarm. Yeah, Scoot Swarm, you know? right? Just something. It's not man. here. I don't know. It's not here. <laughs> so this is one of the weirdest decks I've ever seen in my <gasps> life. There's one in the sideboard. There is a Scoot Swarm. It's in the sideboard. We did oh it. My we really God. did it. Do you do you think that this is a deck which goes like Emergent Ultimatum, searching up Scoot Swarm and Vastwood Surge and Toski? <laughs> is that what we're yeah. doing with our seven yeah, mana with, Ultimatum? Maybe with maybe with two fabled passages already on the battlefield for uh, ultimate magical Christmas land. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, we laugh, but this deck came in seventh at this tournament, so clearly there's something right happening here, but this has got to be just one of the most bizarre deck lists I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what's happening. Also, <laughs> side note, this deck mains three copies of Soul Shatter, which I think is becoming a more relevant card now that people are playing cards like the Goldspan Dragon, like the Coma Serpent. Yep, Abzan, Mardu, Esper, all these decks I'm playing Soul Shatter in. Yep. yep. Yep, so it's an important card to have in the board if you're not running in the main and you have access to that black mana. Definitely a card to think about. Um, so yeah, wow. I, yeah, I'm going to have to try this deck just for the lols and uh, report back to the cast. All right, I'm just happy to see so much Saltai going on because... A lot of options in that color combo right now. That's true. Yeah, there really are. So, and then a deck list which I figured you would be interested in looking at to round out our top eight. Grixis Control by Jonathan Oaks. Boy, it's been a while since anyone's been able to do anything with Grixis in standard. So what are you seeing going on here, CGB? I'm seeing another Goldspan Dragon deck yep. that runs Valky slash Tybalt instead of what... I'm looking for it. Most of the counter spells. Yep. Like, so this one is much yeah. more easy going on the counter spells. It only has four Saw It Cummings. I feel like it's really disingenuous to call a deck which runs 20 main deck creatures and four main deck counter spells a control deck. Like, is this really I a control it, deck? It's the future of control, man. Everything's a creature now. Every single card on the front side is, is going to be like a creature or a land all of your all your spells it's even it's 24 creatures if you count the shark typhoons i mean come on man you, it's actually like 50 creatures because you make multiple sharks when you hard cast the typhoons there you go obviously I mean, it's just all creatures all the time but uh, yeah the shell is um the 
the eight adventure creatures from Izzet, the Bone Crushers and Brazens, four Gold Span Dragons, four Valkyries, four Shark Typhoon, and then the black cards kind of come through. One of the big weaknesses I talked about with the tempo deck is that, like, if you ever play that deck against a green deck, they just play, like, a Yorvo or a Lovestruck Beast, and you realize you're never killing it. It's a very sad feeling. And this this deck has four Heartless Acts and two Eliminates to mitigate the size matters problem. There's also 26 lands, and two of them are Field of Ruin. In your Grixis deck, no less. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's aspirational. Man, this is like an interesting... This reads as basically more of a tempo aggro deck to me than anything else. I mean, it's it's is it tempo, but with less counters and more removal? Exactly. It, it's better for a gruel metagame. Exactly. That's it. They took the is it tempo list, and they just decided that they wanted different answers, basically. I mean, I do like being able to pivot into like a really powerful late game with the Valky. So I feel like that's really something that this deck has got going that the Is It Tempo does not. Yeah, when it's running low on cards, it can top deck Tybalt and just go, you know, grind them out that way. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing I think as well is that, uh, which I think comes up a lot, one of the reasons I really like this black removal in the format right now is that there are so many creature lands. And the Is It Tempo list, I think, has a hard time dealing with those if it doesn't have its own out to block, basically. And so. Which is always a bad deal. If you're the one blocking with the creature land, you are much more at risk than your opponent. Exactly. So I I really, it's come in clutch so many times for me, man. Just being able to take out a Faceless Haven can really, really save you. So yeah, I, I, this list looks compelling to me. I would give it a try. Agreed. I like it. Maybe it solves some of the. Best of one issues I had with the deck, too. Absolutely. Now, let's just jump over quickly to this other SCG satellite because and, and just see if there's anything new on this list. It's kind of cool, actually. So, I mean, okay, first place was taken down by Demir Rogues. Wah, wah, wah. But then wah, we, wah, wah. we see another copy of this Grixis control list in the number two spot played by Wataru, Wataru Ueda. Same deck. Yep. Card for card. Exactly the same deck. So I don't know which genius was responsible for coming up with this, but pretty cool deck overall. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to get corrected if I don't fix something. There is one less Field of Ruin and one more Temple. Okay. (laughs) Not exactly the same deck. Okay, move on. (laughs) We did it. We really did it. Okay, um, so then in number three, we have another Gruul Adventure list, which looks... Pretty much card for card the same as that other one we read off. So this is maybe just the new build of Gruel Adventures standard. Then in fourth place, we have LSV's Is It Tempo list coming on in. Kazuma actually making an appearance there. Oh, okay. Is My that girl. True? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's talk about this because Kosuma has not been standard in these deck lists whatsoever. So Masaki here is playing two main deck Kosumas. Uh, anything else of note? That looks like the only spice in the deck. Yeah, replace two Frostbite with two main deck. Kosuma, God of the Voyage, slash the Omen Keel. More value. It is a pretty low-cost way to get your uh, value if you have it on turn three. The Omen Keel is also not terrible, and there's creatures to crew it. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to try it at some point. I do worry when... I do worry when Kazuma... I think it's Kazuma because of Cosmos. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Um, I I do worry when Kazuma, like we said last week, is your only source of real card advantage. Behold the multiverse, kinda. But there's only 24 lands in this deck. Seems really bad when you play Kazuma on three, exile it, and then miss land drops at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Totally. Especially since a lot of this deck's plan for generating mana is through the Goldspan Dragon. So, you know, we're not really... Yeah, there's no ramp, there's no whatever else. I agree. Seems a little bit weird. Uh, personally, I would be happy to run Cosma in my Is It Tempo deck, but I would always start it in the sideboard if it were, were me. I'm just gonna... I, I just want to appreciate that there's another Cosma fan out there just trying to make this card a thing. Just crowbar it. Just crowbar it till it works. You know, it, it has two years to find a home and stand it. I, I think we'll get there. All right, Sultai Midrange. If I've learned anything, it's that these Sultai Midrange lists are all weird. So let's see what 
It's the same list, CGB. No, okay, it's not the same <laughs> list, but it's it's another three Toski Saltai Yorian deck. What is going on? Uh, uh, it must be this all runs epiphany. Like, let's walk through it. Okay. If you if you cast Emergent Ultimatum, of which there are four, and you're at like a parody spot, not too far behind, you don't need to sweep the board, basically. And you get Toski and all runs epiphany and what how do you finish that yeah i don't i don't know Vorin Klex? Third, maybe Vorinclex. uh that's a lot of damage and you draw a card right away mhm i mean that seems okay to me but it doesn't seem busto right i feel like we have stronger things to get with our ultimatum is kind of my opinion yeah i don't i can't say i get it um what are what are i just don't see how toski does the job yeah so and this is a very different deck list by the way than the other one that we were looking at so let's give a little bit of a rundown here so this this looks a little bit more mid-rangey to me this is playing one copy of ugin one copy of liliana waker of the dead randomly and then so the creature package we've got three toskies two valkies two Vorinclex, two elder gargaroth two beanstalk giant two tangled florahedron so that just is a confusing lineup of creatures not really sure what we're trying to get done with that combination of things i'm assuming again elder gargaroth might just be a target for the ultimatum but again i feel like if we could get an elder gargaroth wouldn't we just want to get i mean i shudder to say it but i, I would rather get a coma in this situation or just a <laughs> but you can't PR it's best. multicolored. Oh, you can't get coma, that's true. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Well, anyway, yeah. Kiara Best the Sea God is just twice the card that Elder Gargaroth is. So, yeah, I don't I don't really know why you would reach for a Gargaroth unless you were on the brink of death. I suppose it's a good counter to the Goldspan Dragon, so that could be a thing. Yeah, yeah, it does outsize that thing pretty well. Now, this is a Cultivate deck, and it's also an omen deck so it's running four copies of omen of the sea of course four copies of binding three elspeth's nightmare only two wolf willow haven so yeah and then of course this is also a three shadows verdict deck as well and then it's got just a smattering of other kind of like removal spells and stuff like that so yeah this is another deck where the game plan is really not evident to me just from reading the list oh oh it's very clear the, what you're going to do is you're going to play Toski, Bearer of Secrets, and then you're going to cast Shadow's Verdict and remove all the little blockers so you get in there and draw your card. Okay, we did it. <laughs> I, I I mean, the, it must work. Like, there's something to this. Two people have done well with something going on here. I, mm, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think of what decks Toski is torturing, and maybe it is just that you play this on turn four. And a lot of decks, or turn three with a Florahedron or a, rant, a Wolf of Low Haven, and a lot of decks just can't keep something in front of it. One thing I can say is that these Soltai decks are definitely designed for the long game, and if you are doing a good job of controlling your opponent's board, Toski might just be howling mine, right? It might just be yeah. drawing you an extra card every turn. All right, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm putting <laughs> Toski in all my green control decks, and we're just going to roll with it, man. Did you did you see that there's a world tree in this mana base? Oh, there is a world tree. Yeah, double of them as well. Two that world trees. Um, it's also running some snow. Why is it running snow, CGB? I was looking for blood on the snow, but I don't see it. Don't see it must be a that. bluff. Snow bluff. It is. It's a straight up snow bluff. Oh, they're going to get owned by Redain. How, you know what we've seen? Zero copies of Redain so far. Yeah, we've not seen any Redain. Rip, rip, rip. All right. Well, clearly there's some funky, funky brews going on in the Sultai Swamp. Yeah. Okay. So that rounds out the top eight of this uh, SCG tour number one. I'm going to put a link to both of these in the show notes. So you can you can take a look at these deck lists that we've been talking about. But I don't know, CGB, this is a, a very odd, interesting looking meta game that we're seeing in these tournaments so far. And I don't know, it, it bodes well for me. I, this could just be more week one malarkey, but seeing all of these kind of weird cards show up and actually perform well gives me some hope. 
is Toski Malarkey. Tune in next week. We're gonna go do our testing and find out. Oh my goodness. I'm I, I'm doing it now, man. I'm I'm brewing. I'm gonna play Valky, God of Lies. Then I'm gonna play Omen of the Sun and make two one ones, and then I'm gonna play Toski and I'm gonna draw those cards, man. That's what I'm gonna do. I love it. Five color Yarian dubious control. Tune in next week to see how CGB does. And that will conclude the podcast this week around. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, if you want to see CGB with his weird machinations, you can find him on his Twitch channel. You can also follow him on YouTube and see what he is up to a different deck every day if you're not familiar with what he does. And then, of course, the Arena Craft podcast can be found just about anywhere you find your podcast. We are also on Spotify. We are also on YouTube. If you have any feedback for any of these videos, YouTube is a great place to go and tell Arjuna why he's being such an annoying douche. All right, that's going to do it. Catch next week. Later. Later.